Hi everyone. Well, um, in experiment one, I have uh, we have discussed about the absorption properties of any photo photoactive materials or known as fluorophore. How do they excite their electron by absorbing light of certain wavelength? Now, let us see the structure again. No, photoactive materials not just uh, considered to be found in semiconductor. It could be organic material as well. For example, of organic material is um, dye or colors which we could extract from fruits or plants or leaves. So, in example, if we have extracted dye, for example, dye red dye or green dye from from leaves, for example, if you look at the structure, now we could see we could uh, characterize the structure by using the band energy level as well. So. Organic materials, for example, dye, they also have these um, energy levels known as highest occupied molecular orbitals, which has many discrete energy levels, and they have electrons inside the energy level. Now, this is an example, and also it also has lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals which also discrete energy levels that looks like this but no electrons is occupying the energy levels in LUMO unoccupied, this is occupied, occupied by electrons unoccupied by electrons, no electrons for the time being so, now imagine that it receives illumination of sunlight with sufficient energy how sufficient the energy will be? which is the energy of sunlight is greater or equivalent to the energy band gap so this is the band gap the energy level difference between the HOMO and also LUMO so whenever these electrons receive enough energy or sufficient energy of sunlight it will have greater energy and it will be excited to the LUMO or even higher if it receives very high energy it could go to LUMO plus 1 this is LUMO plus 0 this is HOMO negative 0 and this is HOMO negative 1 so on and so forth so on and so forth so we like to be excited to hear now what will happen what we are trying to study in experiment number 2 which is you, we will use the photoluminescence spectra photoluminescence spectroscopy is that when this excited state electron uh, is located at LUMO plus 0 or LUMO plus 1, they are unstable. So to stabilize themselves, they need to recombine to the hole in HOMO. They will recombine to the hole in HOMO. And during the recombination, when the excited state electron recombine with hole, it will emit light with certain wavelength now there are three objectives in experiment number two which is using the photoluminescence spectrometer the first one is to predict to predict the excited lambda exc the wavelength of light which is needed to excite the materials to excite the material now this is will be your first objective you need to predict which wavelength of light will be used uh, will be needed to excite an electron from HOMO to LUMO depending on the material so how do you hypothesize for example for example you have you could define this solution of dye is red in color so how do we determine that which wavelength could excite electron of the dye from this diagram now what you can do is you have to refer to this wheel we have this wheel 
starting from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo plus violet. Now, if you say that the color of dye is red, this is red. So, any material that has red in color usually could be excited using green color of light. Any red material could be excited using green color of light. Or, if you are not agree, if you don't agree that this material, this dye is red in color, maybe you will say that it could be orange in color. Now, if the material is orange in color, so we need blue light to excite its electron from homo to lomo. So, this is your hypothesis. So, in that case, if the color of the dye is red, red dye, we need green color of light. Now, look at the diagram. You also could Google it very easily. Find the wavelength of green light. Find the wavelength of green light. And this will be your first parameter to be set on the instrument. So, remember, this is your first hypothesis. You need to prove it during the, during the experiment. And what is your second objective? Your second objective is to characterize the photoluminescence properties of the dye. You need to characterize the photoluminescence properties of the dye. So, from the machine, from the instrument, whenever you characterize the dye, you will get this kind of graph. So, this will be the wavelength nanometer, and this will be photoluminescence count. The unit is intensity, and the graph will be look like this Gaussian type of graph. So, there is a peak over there. What can you observe from the peak? Look at the corresponding wavelength of the peak, and you will get here, for example, uh, x nanometer, and this will be the wavelength of the emitted light. Whenever the electron recombine with hole, it will emit light with certain wavelength and could be detected by the photoluminescence spectrometer and a graph could be plotted like this and the corresponding uh, wavelength of the peak is the wavelength of the emitted wavelength or the emitted light. Now, this will be your second objective. Now, how about third objectives? Now, third objective is <coughs> you need to calculate the energy loss. How to calculate the energy loss? You see, whenever the electron receives enough energy, it will be excited. Then it will be, it will recombine, absorb, excited, and recombine, then emit secondary photon or secondary light. Now, this light and this light could not be at the same wavelength and could not be at the same energy. This light, this emitted wavelength should contain less energy than the absorbed light. So there is energy loss during the recombination. Loss as what? Maybe loss as heat. And we need to calculate the energy loss during the recombination. And how do we calculate the energy loss? Simple. By comparison of the photoluminescence graph with absorption spectra graph. For example, if your dye... Now, we need to draw one more graph. Okay, now, we need to add one more y-axis over here. Let's say this is your absorption spectra and the unit is absorbance unit. And you find out that the graph looks like this. And remember, this is your lambda PL, the emitted light. And this is your absorbed 
wavelength. We have two. Now, how to calculate energy loss? So, energy loss is equivalent to energy absorbed minus emitted energy by photoluminescence. Now, how do we calculate? Energy absorbed is to be calculate, uh, calculated easily by Hc over lambda. H is Planck's constant. C is a uh, speed of light in vacuum, and lambda is lambda a b, absorbed lambda, which determined by ultraviolet to visible spectrometer. Now, to make your work easy, the lambda of the absorbed lambda is given in your lab manual so you that so that you don't have to characterize your sample using two instruments you just focus on the production or generation of this graph using pl the black graph should be should be should be uh, generated by uv's machine but in exper this experiment you don't need to run any uv's machine you just need to run the pl machine and the lambda ab is given Minus Hc over lambda uh, Pl. Then you will get your answer in electron volt. So this will be the calculation of energy loss. This loss plus heat. So this will be your third objective. Now, this is the theory. Excitation uh, and then um, uh, recombination. Then you need to characterize the sample uh, using the PL spectra and you need to predict, calculate the energy loss and don't forget that this is your objective number one is to determine the wavelength of light which is needed to excite the material using this diagram. So now, we move to um, the instrumental part. Um,